The most sought after trophy in all of drag racing has come to Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. The man with the wheel, or as it's more commonly known in drag racing circles, the Wally. Some of the best drivers in Western Canada and the United States have gathered at Budweiser Motorsports Park to see who has the right stuff to win the holy grail of drag racing. Race fans, this is Trilenium Industries Championship Drag Racing and coverage of Snap on Tools, Hot August Night and the NHRA Canadian Open. And the search for Wally begins tonight. Good evening, race fans, and welcome to Budweiser Motorsports Park, Shaw Motorsports, and Trilenium Industries Championship NHRA Drag Racing, bringing you exclusive coverage of the NHRA Canadian Open and the Snap-on Tools. Hot August night. What a race we have for you here tonight, race fans. We've got 15 classes of race cars sitting in the pit area. I hope we have enough time to bring you all the race action, semifinals and finals for sure in most of the classes. And we're going to start up next here with the Federal Mogul, Top Alcohol, Funny Cars, and Dragster. Race fans, this is Trilenium Ministries Championship Drag Racing and coverage of Snap-on Tools Hot August Night and the NHRA Canadian Open right here on Shaw Motorsports. High above in the announcer tower, I'm Gord Craig. Joining me, Stan Anchors. Stan, what, what, a, what a night of racing we have ahead of us. Oh, we do, Gord. I mean, the weather's just been beautiful today. That'll make the track just come around right in Arathon here, hopefully. And uh, it's just going to be a great night of racing. Well, we've got a little teaser for you at home, race fans, that we've got some pro-alcohol funny cars. Daryl Webb, the king of the burnouts, getting ready to light him up right now. And he'll be taking on Jay Maggio in the Prospector. Yeah, these two here are running the 750 funny car class. And uh, Jay's car, of course, it's the only one of its type in Canada, the 57. Chevy, Bel Air, and uh, the 82 Corvette of uh, Daryl Webb. Yep, yep. It's just going to be a great, great deal. And of course, Daryl is doing burnouts for a charity again here tonight. And Daryl, of course, he is known as the king of, dra of the burnouts. And again, he's showing up another his reason name. why. But hey, uh, but uh, Jay Vaggio actually is uh, no slouch either at burnouts because this is a brand new car for him for the 2000 season. And he, he's really getting the hang of it rather quickly. That, yes, he is, Gordon. And what's happened with Jay, of course, it's a very quick learning curve for him this year, and he's come along exceptionally well. I mean, he's met the challenge, and of course, with Daryl giving him the, throwing the glove down and that and challenging him, Jay's come along quite well this year. Well, the Pro Alcohol Funny Car class that uh, we have here, that we're seeing here tonight, just the two cars showing up, a teaser for the race fans as a... Uh, there's a group of about 12 or 13 of them that uh, travel to tracks in uh, Western Canada and uh, they slip into the States every once in a while too on the uh, strips down there. Yes, they do. Matter of fact, in a couple of weeks, they're going down to Mission, Daryl and JR. Okay, okay, well that's good. So a little bit of a test and tune for them. But at the same time, there's no such thing as test and tuning when you're coming to uh, racing against your, your buddies. And these two drivers off the track are buddies on the racetrack. Well, they want to show each other up. Uh, that's true. Up until the bulbs are lit in the pre-stage and stage, they're the best of friends. They're very good friends. They uh, always together quite a bit. But when the lights light up, it's a different story. Daryl Webb in the far lane, Jay Maggio in the near lane. We are set for exhibition racing here in our pro alcohol funny car class. Good to have Cine Audio Visual on board once again, providing us with some different camera angles for tonight's show. There they go. 
And they are off. Daryl Webb, Jay Maggio. Daryl Webb out in front. But here comes Jay Maggio going to try and make a race of it. At the finish line, it is. Daryl Webb picking up the big win. He's cruising at around 180 miles an hour, both these two drivers. And uh, sorry, race fans, we were supposed to have some information for you on the screens. Reaction time, elapsed time, mile per hour didn't happen. Uh, hopefully we'll get the, that situated and fixed up for you uh, for our next pass of Funny Cars, which is the Federal Mogul Funny Car. This is semifinal action. We talked with one of the drivers earlier on. And Stan Anchors, for some strange reason, I've got a craving for an Eat More chocolate bar. We're going to head into the pits right now. Driving the Eat More Top Alcohol Federal Mogul Funny Car from Humboldt, Saskatchewan, Kevin Torres. Kevin, of course, what a night for night number one of uh, qualifying here at uh, Budweiser Motorsports Park. You set your best ET mark here at this facility. Yeah, it was really exciting. Uh, we ran a 612 at uh, 226.98, and uh, the car was really good, uh, hold, holding the track well, and, and we were really happy to do that uh, for Eat More and Mac Tools, you bet. Now, Kev, a lot of frustration on, on drivers for the 2000 season, mainly because of rainouts. No momentum building whatsoever. Absolutely, and, uh, and of course, we don't want to be like the farmers and complain, but actually the rain has hurt us. Now, of course, that's what you do. Uh, that's your regular job. This is uh, the fun stuff you do on the weekends. Yeah, actually, I'm an ag mechanic, a heavy-duty mechanic at a shop. I work every day, and uh, needless to say, uh, we hear that from the farmers about the weather. So, Well, Kevin Therese, good luck tonight at the NHRA Canadian Open, and uh, hoping maybe you'll bring home a Wally. Well, we're, we're hoping for that, too, and we hope uh, the best for all our competitors. Good luck in round one. Thank you very much. Well, as we bring up the ladder race fans, uh, the number one qualifier was Roger Bateman, and he got the by round, uh, by run in round number one. We just finished talking with him. Kevin Therese, well, Therese taking up Brian Poto out of Calgary in the 95 Firebirds. So Therese will be going on into round number two. We'll be seeing that in a couple of moments. John Evanchuk, your number three qualifier, taking out Ken Krause from Great Falls, Montana. Evanchuk and Therese will be a great matchup. And Danny Fillion taking out Rory Christensen from Stettler. And uh, right now, we do move into round number two action, uh, Stan Anchors. And, uh, hey, look who's coming up. It's the number one qualifier, Roger Bateman in the near lane. That's right, Gordon. And this is the one that the other three are shooting for. Over the winter time, they put more into the car. They put more equipment into the car, upgraded in that. And they're out to take Roger out tonight. Well, there's a good close look at the uh, Mopac uh, Showdown Top Alcohol Funny Car of Roger Bateman. Each and every Canadian Open event that, that we've run here at Budweiser Motorsports Park, a new track record's been set. Last year, Roger Bateman set down a stout 587, 238.15 miles an hour, and he owns both ends of the track record here at this facility. But the, the track tonight, though, a little bit greasy. We've got an easterly wind. Yeah, and I, I don't know what we can see here. We'll just have to wait and see. It's a, like you say, Gord, it's a little greasy, and the guys have been in the first round a little all over the track, and uh, it's going to be interesting the second round. Well, sure nice to see Sydney Audio Visual on board once again with uh, some uh, unique camera views here as uh, we do have a start line finish camera for uh, the remainder of our show here tonight as we uh, take a good look at the burnout. Burnout's very important for these uh, 2,500 horsepower machines. Yes, Gord. They have to get these tires sticky. I mean, they're very wide, and uh, the idea is to get everything planted right off the starting line. Very important. And if it doesn't happen, they can go up and smoke. So the burnout is not a show. It turns out to be that way, but it's the main purpose is not a show. It's for a goal. Well, the tires get heat, uh, heated up to about 800 degrees Fahrenheit, nice and sticky so they adhere to the uh, concrete launch pad. In fact, uh, all of our competitors do have to do burnouts, a very uh, vital part of a quarter-mile run. Well, Danny Fillion in the far lane in the Snap-on Tools sponsored the Federal Mogul Top Alcohol uh, Funny Car. We saw him license on this show a few years ago, and boy, has he ever come a long way. So it's a Fillion and Bateman, round number two. One of these two cars goes to the final. RPMs come up right now. Again, Danny spent a lot of money and time over the winter time just for this run right here pretty well. Let's see how he does.
While both drivers are away, Danny Fillion cuts the better light. Reaction time, oh, so important, but Roger Bateman will get the big win, a 635, 226.70 miles an hour. Danny Fillion, a 689, had to slow her up just a little bit, 197.28 miles an hour. Well, Roger Bateman goes to the final here. That's why he's still the man to beat. You know, even though he had the worst reaction time, he's still going down the track. The driving came out, his experience in that, and he won the race. So Roger Bateman and crew will head back into the pit area and put the wrenches to that race car as uh, they get set for final round appearance on our broadcast a little bit later on in uh, this uh, program. And uh, Stan, the crowd here at Budweiser Motorsports Park, they know a good race when they see one. That's why the crowd's out tonight. Yes. As we say, look, actually, a Danny Fillion had probably a good 10, 20-foot lead, and then he had to back off, got out of the racing groove a bit, and a Roger Bateman in the replay going on yeah. for the big win. Our second pairing of funny cars, we've already had talked with Kevin Torres, the number two qualifier, taking on the number three qualifier, and John Evanchuk out of Edmonton. One is a 97 Olds Cutlass, the other a 97 Chevy Lumina, the Eatmore sponsored funny car against the uh, Husky Red Wolf top alcohol funny car of Evans Chuck. Let's uh, watch these drivers uh, heat up the hides, I guess we can say, Ray, with the uh, Goodyear racing slicks. Yes, score. This this should be a very good race. Uh, John, over the winter time, along with Kevin, has spent a lot of time and a lot of money, and there's been a lot of preparation, preparation in the last few days here. So, you know, I'm. I'm it's hard to see. I have to put my money on John on this one, but uh, I'll tell you, Kevin's come along this way this year. We talked with John Evanchuk uh, uh, earlier on in this broadcast in the pit area. Uh, some stressful times right now for the Red Wolf uh, Top Alcohol Funny Car team of John Evanchuk out of Edmonton. Uh, the first round, you may have hurt something in the car. Uh, well, we're just doing some routine maintenance, and we've had such little time between rounds here, things aren't cooling off too good, so maybe it's just heat-related and we got extra clearances that we're not usually aware of. It's been a tricky track to control here tonight, of course, so you probably wish you qualified just a little bit better. Yeah, the track's been not there. It seems like out in the middle of the track it's not there, so we haven't been able to put a whole bunch of horsepower to it out there where we would normally run big numbers with this motor. Now, a lot of people are anticipating a battle of Alberta final between yourself and of course Roger Bateman out of Calgary. Yeah well that would be great you know we'd, we'd love to get against Roger again in the final and uh, see if we can redeem ourselves from last year but you know Kevin Therese over there in that Eatmore car boy they got that thing running good and uh, we got to get by him first so we're not looking at Roger yet. Stan, if there is ever an opportunity for an upset, this is it for Kevin Therese. He ran a 622 in round one. John Evanchuk ran a 645 in round one. Kev would love to put John on the trailer right now. Oh, yes, he would, Gordon. Yes, you're very right. If there is an upset, this could be it. The Eatmore Top Alcohol Funny Car. Mac Tools, another proud sponsor in there, taking on John Evanchuk in the Red Wolf Top Alcohol Funny Car. The RPMs are up. Here we go. Is there an upset in the making? Well, John Evanchuk no. has answered the call of 538 reaction time, and he wins it a 641. Ooh, we've got some motor problems, looks like, with Kevin Therese, a 675, 186.29 miles an hour. Evanchuk running 218.92 miles an hour. So he bumped up at the performance just a little bit, and enough to take out Kevin Therese out of Humboldt, Saskatchewan. So it will be the Battle of Alberta. It was anticipated, and uh, John Evanchuk will be taking on Roger Bateman in the All-Alberta Final. And uh, we're going to bring up the ladder for you right now, race fans, and uh, just to show you how each of these uh, drivers have made it to the final. Bateman, the number one qualifier all the way to the final. John Evanchuk, you saw him just moments ago taking out Kevin Therese. It will be the Battle of Alberta. Calgary versus Al Edmonton. Evanchuk taking on Bateman. Dragsters coming up next. 
uncertainties of uh, the day here at uh, Budweiser Motorsports Park, part of the NHRA Canadian Open hot August night. Mike Caffini up from Spokane, Washington, qualifying earlier on today. And oh, you did a number on your race car. Uh, yeah, we left line, uh, went into a wheel stand, got the wheels about four feet in the air. I just shifted to second gear, and right about then it broke the rear end. So came down kind of hard, and, and unfortunately we don't have the spare parts to fix it for this race, but we'll be there in Calgary for the weekend. That is too bad because uh, you ran so well a couple of weeks ago down at the big H AHRA race in uh, uh, Seattle, or Spokane, wasn't it? Spokane, yes. that's mm -hmm. your hometown, and you run it up there, but uh, you're hoping for a big showing here. Yeah, our car's making good power. Um, hopefully we'll get a chance to uh, get it all together for Calgary and show you guys what this thing's got in it. Well, thank you very much, though, for coming to Edmonton, Alberta, Canada, and uh, you're going to be a spectator, you and your crew, for the rest of the night. Yeah, we'll be working, too, So, but uh, we'll be back here for next year's for sure. Well, that's, that's too bad for uh, Mike Cofini making the long haul from Spokane, Washington. Uh, yeah, watching the race for the rest of this broadcast. Here's the uh, top alcohol dragster ladder for you at home race fans. The number one qualifier was Steve Sitko. He got the bye run in round number two. He will face Leo Grocock from Mission BC in round two coming up in just a couple of moments. There's Dion. He took out Don Cleese from Mission British Columbia. Dion will take on well, Mr. Edwards Jr. Bill Edwards from Sumas, Washington. And uh, we've got the cars uh, coming up to the start line right now. But, Stan, uh, we do have some cars missing, unfortunately. What's happened is uh, Sirs Dion, after his winning run, he broke. And uh, he's not going to be able to make the call to uh, face uh, Bill Edwards Jr. And, therefore, Bill Edwards will get the single into the final. Yeah, that's an unfortunate uh, break for Serge Actually, we've got word from the pits that what has happened is they've possibly spun a bearing. Ouch. So they got to yank the so motor and everything So that puts you out that. right now. You're done. So, yeah. yeah, Serge Dion can't make the call. So Bill Edwards Jr., boy, this has been a rough race for top alcohol dragsters. We had Mike Coffini just finished the interview with him, breaking his car. And, well, we're not going to get a stout run right now from Bill Edwards Jr. either. I think this is a smart move. On his part, you can see the reaction time. Ouch, a .400 is a perfect light on the pro tree. So a Bill Edwards Jr. is just taking a, well, Wednesday night drive down the strip into the final. Crosses the finish line at 20.48 at 50.19 miles an hour. Bill Edwards Jr. goes in to the final. I'm suspecting he's hurting a little, Gord. B.J. Edwards or Bill Edwards uh, here at Budweiser Motorsports Park for the 2000 Canadian National Open and hot August night. Track a little bit tricky during qualifying. It was. We, we were here about three or four years ago and had problems. So the first pass, first qualifying lap, we uh, went real safe on everything and made it down. Actually pretty happy with the way we made it down. Uh, the second time, we just, again, just being safe and actually slowed down a little bit. But... Uh, uh, we, we feel pretty comfortable getting down the track, I think. Well, that's the name of the game right now, is getting down the track. And uh, who you're facing in round number one, of course, uh, if they don't get down the track as good as you, well, you're going to be on to the next round. That's right. A lot of the qualifying times right now are so close, so it's going to be anybody's game. Um, of course, a faster qualifier gets to get his lane choice, but uh, we've made past both lanes now, and we feel pretty comfortable. Wow, Stan Anker's uh, mechanical uh, gremlins hitting our top alcohol dragster field. Leo Grocock from Mission British Columbia sitting in the pit area right now. He's done for the day, so Steve Sitko gets the single run and looks like he's going to baby it down the quarter mile as well. He doesn't want to take a chance. Smart Bill Edwards Jr. didn't want to take a chance either. Very smart. Yeah, I, they're conserving their parts for the final, for the big run. Um, you know, there's a question on whether they should give it or not, but there's different opinions of this. Well, here is our uh, ladder for the final here, race fans. Steve Sitko, your number one qualifier, goes to the final. Uh, he was supposed to meet Grocock in round number two, didn't make the call. Grocock broke. Serge Dion uh, was supposed to take on Bill Edwards Jr. from Sumas, Washington. Dion didn't make the call. So it is a U.S.-Canada final. Steve Sitko from Edmonton, Bill Edwards Jr. from Sumas, Washington. Nobody beats the competition. Competition shovels in Stony Plain, 15 minutes west of Edmonton, reminding you the Canada-wide clearance event is underway. 
The flagship of car and truck stops in Canada is now open. The brand new Husky Edmonton Car and Truck Stop and Husky House Restaurant, west of Edmonton, corner of Highway 16 and 60. Zippy's Auto, custom-made turbo systems, custom exhaust work, suspension modifications, and more, 447-1362. And your choice for quality used auto parts is You Pull It Auto Parts. All parts come with a 30-day warranty. Save money, You Pull It Auto Parts in Edmondson. And ESCOM Electrical Distributors, helping out the industrial and oil field 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Give Steve Borsma a call in NISCU. And the sponsors of this program, Trial and Name Industries, they're the design and manufacturing specialists for the oil field, mining, and pulp and paper industries. Trilinium also offers general machining and hydraulic repairs. The new millennium is here for manufacturing, design, quality repairs. Maybe it's time to give Trilinium Industries a call, 413-4635. Volcano, gravity storm. What's going on? You're pulling a fast one on here tonight at uh, Budweiser Motorsports Park. Chuck Haynes. Thank you. It's great to be back, Gord. Yeah, we've, we've slipped a little one in on you guys this time. We bought a brand new car out here. We did, This is the debut of the Volcano jet car. So this is the first appearance in Canada, first appearance on TV as well, and uh, hey, well, first appearance for the fans that are packing the grandstands here at Budweiser Motorsports Park. It is. It's actually the first appearance of the car anywhere, both in the United States and in Canada, as, as we know it as Volcano. It's a brand new car for me. Now, the difference between your Volcano Jet Dragster and Gravity Storm, what are the main differences? Well, actually, both cars were built by the same guy, which makes it really nice for me. I can climb in either car, and I'm comfortable in either one of them. However, the new car is a little lighter, about 200 pounds lighter. There's a few tricks that have been done to the compressor section on that Pratt & Whitney J60, and it's making for some awfully quick times. Now, we talked about this last year, hoping to see maybe uh, closing in on the 300 mile an hour mark. Is that possible tonight? Well, I'd sure like to think so. Uh, I won't promise anything. The air is still pretty warm here, and the shutdown area is a little short here, the braking area. So, uh, obviously, the first run, I'm going to ease into it and shut it off a little early, and we'll see how easy we get it stopped. Um, as the night goes on and it cools off and the air gets a little better, that's when we're going to see the big numbers, and we're certainly going to try. Well, Chuck Haynes, good luck in the brand spanking new Volcano Jet Dragster here at uh, the hot August night here at Budweiser Motorsports Park. Well, you got to love jet cars, uh, Stan Anchors, and we're going to be seeing from Chuck Haynes in the brand spanking new Volcano in just a couple of moments. But what's that I hear? I hear a train of coming. Ah, uh, yes. Our buddy from down south from California. From Van Nuys, California, Casey Jones and the Cannonball Express. Of course, he made his debut on television in the Edmonton area last year, last year on Shaw Motorsports. And, of course, making his debut on our first show of the season in 2000, Brad Janiszewski from, Rolling, uh, from uh, Drayton Valley. That's right, in the SeaTech Energy Services Rolling Thunder car. Yeah, SeaTech, of course, a uh, proud sponsor of uh, the Rolling Thunder. Of course, you need sponsors. We need sponsors. We just went through moments ago to bring you the television coverage here, and, of course, you need sponsors to run a race car. That's right. Even though these guys are paid to come to the track and everything, they still need sponsors. These are very expensive cars and that, and uh, Brad and Heather, they, uh, they're so happy to be back here since the race a month ago here, and uh, they're just looking forward to running again tonight. Well, Brad Janiszewski in Rolling Thunder, and it's a 2000 Monte Carlo is what the, the body is. And uh, the jets here that we have on the property that you'll be seeing here tonight on Shaw Motorsports Race Fans, around 11 to 12,000 horsepower each. It's the thrust, actually, is what the, it's measured in, and it's around 6,000 to 6,500 uh, pounds of thrust, and anywhere between 11 to about 12,000 horsepower. Yeah, it's, a, it's just amazing what these cars are doing. And, of course, now this year, NHRA's allowed them to run over 300 miles an hour before they were kept under that. And, of course, Chuck wants to You never know with that brand-new new car. Yeah. 500 pounds, 400 pounds lighter. Uh, Chuck Haynes holds the ET record here at Budweiser Motorsports Park. Uh, 552, Doug Doth, at a jet dragster competitor from California, ran 289.20 miles an hour here at this track back in 1997. Will we see 300 miles an hour tonight? I'm keeping my fingers crossed. My money's on Chuck Haynes in the brand new Volcano Jet Dragster. Yeah, if anybody's going to do it, it has to be Chuck, but Casey over here, 
He might have something to say about that. Too. He could do around 280, 290 miles an hour as well. And I was just looking at a sheet that uh, Casey Jones handed me uh, after the interview that we saw, or that we'll be seeing a little bit later on. And the fuel mileage is not the best in these uh, jet cars, but 105 gallons to the mile is the fuel economy of these jet cars. We are starting up the cars right now. Let's listen in. We've got a smoke and fire show for you. Turn up the volumes on your TV at home, race fans, because here we go. It is Brad Janiszewski crossing the line, a 696, 221.45 miles an hour for the win. Uh, Casey Jones, a 6.6 something, obviously our clock's messing up again, a 209, there we go, 6.66 second run, and we had to use the scoreboards here at the racetrack, a 209.64 miles an hour. Janiszewski winning round number one in the jet cars here against uh, his buddy up from the California, KC Jones. Yeah, and of course Brad, local homeboy out of Drayton Valley, he put a number on the reaction time there to uh, KC. Well, we've got our second uh, round, or second pass, I should say, of our jet car competitors. We've got Chuck Haynes in the debut of Volcano going up against Pacifier and Leland Blee, a driver up from Billings, Montana. In fact, uh, well, Blee and Haynes are actually teammates. Uh, Chuck owns the Haynes Racing Enterprises. He has uh, two jet uh, dragsters under his fold, and he travels around to uh, different racetracks. Of course, he and Blee were down in Australia. The uh, they, well, they rung in the new year down under, uh, going down the quarter mile at around 280 miles an hour. So that was a, a neat experience for both Haynes and uh, Blee. Well, there's a good look at the uh, brand spanking new Volcano Jet Dragster of Chuck Haynes. And uh, a little bit apprehensive prior to the event here tonight. Uh, it's a brand new car, of course, and uh, he's just worried about how it's going to perform here tonight. Of course, uh, he ran south of the border when he bought this car 300 15 miles an hour in a couple of checkout passes, so uh, you betcha. That's one of the reasons why I I'm saying, and we've been saying, that we could see an over 300 mile an hour pass here tonight. Yeah, that's true, Gord. You look on the far side with the pacifier car, 
the fellow that's helping him there tonight is uh, Jeff Goodwin out of Red Deer, Alberta. Actually, Jeff. Jeff went over to Australia with these guys and spent the winter. That's right, and he Jeff did Jeff is a well-known drag racer involved with the alcohol funny car here, and uh, he's been around for a long time. Well, Leland Blee has been around uh, the sport of drag racing for a long time, began uh, racing at around the age of 15. He raced an old 52 Ford. And uh, then he's been involved in uh, nitro cars, both front and rear, actually fuel dragsters. So uh, Leland, he's been around the uh, quarter mile scene for a long time. And when he got the phone call from uh, Chuck Haynes about four years ago, hey, how would you like to race a jet dragster? Leland definitely jumped at the chance, and uh, here he is tonight. Uh, he's uh, paid his due, so to speak. He's been in different categories, yep. running different cards. Yep. And, uh, and understandably, you're having a Fun time doing the jet car thing now. Well, I was just taking a look at the uh, staging lanes. How come there's no cars there? There's no one sitting and standing around in the staging lanes. Well, for a good idea, obviously. There's a, yeah, there's a very good reason they're not standing there, and we'll see that in a few minutes when they light them up. Uh, uh, you don't want to be standing back there. It's a, a safety factor. No. Uh, the stuff they blow off, blow off the back of their exhaust right. and that. Uh, if you're standing there, you could lose your eyesight. Yes, you can. We've uh, got one jet car uh, dragster fired and that's Leland Blee and Pacifier what's going on with Chuck Haynes the volcano jet dragster it's not going uh, sometimes you, uh, your days just don't go right you have a bad hair day whatever and uh, for some reason they can't get that car started well we see one of the uh, helpers uh, coming here comes over Jeff. from He's a gonna come over and see if you can give him a hand also there seems to be a little concern of uh, trying to get it fired up NHRA officials are heading on over. I see uh, one of our starters, Eddie uh, Shapka, heading over there as well. And uh, yeah, it looks like they are looking underneath the jet dragster of Chuck Haynes. Something is uh, not going, they can't get this thing fired. Yeah. So I don't know if it's a fuel distribution problem or maybe a starter problem. Uh, we hope to have some information for you race fans at home watching this and what is going on with uh, Chuck Haynes uh, volcano Jet Dragster. It's got to be very frustrating uh, time for uh, Chuck right now. He's, he's basically a perfectionist and any little thing that doesn't go right uh, drives him absolutely crazy. And here he is with his brand new car. We know it can run over 300 miles an hour. He loves running in Edmonton. He loves the fans up here. They're just great with him and everything and he wants to put on a show. Uh, I can imagine he's very frustrated at this moment and that but uh, this is a uh, part of drag racing. Sometimes you have these problems. That's right. I, I love the paint scheme on this new jet dragster. And, oh, it's uh, beautiful. Some con conversation is going on right now between uh, Chuck Haynes and one of his crew members. Now, the one nice thing here, Gord, is these are jet cars. They're not piston driven. So the other jet car sitting over, the pacifier car sitting over there, he's not being burned down. If this was a piston driven situation, they would have waved the other car ahead in already. Uh, we see Chuck getting out. He's getting out of his car. Unfortunately. He's, yeah. Oh, uh, that's too bad. It is really too bad. Uh, not the debut he wanted for no. this uh, jet dragster, but that they'll be back with the fire show. Get out of there, guys. Yikes. There's the starter uh, being tossed in the back of the, the tow vehicle, uh, the, the volcano jet dragster so they're gonna go back into the pit area maybe it is a starter problem uh, who knows well who we knows? hope to have some information for you race man but in the meantime Leland Lee will get the single in the pacifier jet dragster Chuck Haynes car will not make the call and so Lee will get the single that's too bad that's very disappointing well, I was hoping to uh, Chuck will get a straight yeah. round oh, for the next round of the night here. Indeed he will. Unless it's a major thing, he'll he'll have us corrected. And he'll come back with more vengeance than he did before. Indeed. Flea comes up to the start line. You're going to see the smoke and fire. Full afterburners. Away he goes down the quarter mile. At the finish line, a 642, 212.86 miles an hour. Leland Blee takes round number one between he and uh, Chuck Haynes in the Jet Dragster class. So yeah, a tough break for Chuck Haynes, but they'll head back into the pit area. We hope to see him back for round number two a little bit later on in this broadcast. 
Well, race fans uh, at home, it's uh, been an incredible day so far here at Budweiser Motorsports Park. Uh, the racing started at 11 o'clock this morning, and uh, we're bringing you all the semifinals and the finals as we see the replay of Leland Bree. Lee heading down this track. We are back with more race action here on Shaw Motorsports right after this. And welcome back, race fans. Trilenium Industries Championship Drag Racing and exclusive coverage of the NHRA Canadian Open. Snap on Tools, hot August night. Our first look at Top Comp semifinal action right now. Yeah, Gord, this is a new class that they're actually it started last year. They tried it at a couple of tracks in, in our division. And this year it's full fledged in all the events uh, in our division. And they're trying it out, and eventually they hope to make it. Uh, across the whole of North America and all divisions. Uh, typical drag racers, they want to go faster. The racers approached NHRA and said, hey, can we have this class? Here's how we'd like to do it. And NHRA said, sure, let's give it a try. And it's just working out really well. There's a good look at Brian Adams and that 96 Firebird. Uh, Adams out of Leduc, your number two qualifier in uh, time trials earlier on today, taking on Kevin Bertram out of Airdrie in the rear engine dragster. Uh, Bertram, your number four qualifier. Dialed in, Bertram on an 812, Adams a 777. Don't go faster than that. Reaction time, oh so important. Bertram, a 559 reaction time. You'd think that was gonna be good enough for a win. No way. Oh. No, Adams comes from behind to steal the victory away. A 789 on a 777 dial in time. Bertram running an 862 on his 812 dial in time. A dial in time, Stan Anchors. That uh, well, evens up the field just a little bit. It's the anticipated run down the quarter mile. That's what a dial in time is, race fans, if you are brand new to uh, NHRA drag racing in this uh, top comp class. Yeah. Now here we have two dragsters. Matter of fact, dragster that we're looking at right now, that's Brian Adams' old car. Oh, it is. That's right, too. But it's Terry Cameron now behind the wheel out of a Calmar. Your number one qualifier. He went the fastest in uh, time trials earlier on tonight. He's going up against Mark Campbell. Mark Campbell uh, definitely loves this class. Uh, super comp racer, numerous track championships at this facility. So Terry Cameron definitely has his uh, hands full in this semifinal round. Campbell is dialed in with an 808. Cameron, a 753. A perfect light is 0.500. Campbell is away first with a 5.33. Cameron, the better reaction time with a 5.24 at the finish line. Campbell runs an 8.10, but Cameron, look how close he was to his dial-in time, a 7.54, 176.36 miles an hour. Terry Cameron picks up the big win. I would consider that a little bit of an upset. Yes, yes. Um, again, look at the reaction time. There's where the difference was. Uh, the horsepower picked up in the top end for Kit Terry, and he got Mark. Both good racers, both from the Supercom ranks, but uh, excellent race. And taking a look at the latter race fans, uh, Cameron and Adams, how did they get to the final? Well, Cameron took out Steve Flasha in round number one, Flasha down from White Court. Mark Campbell taking out uh, Giroux, Dale Giroux of Canyon Creek, Alberta. But, of course, we saw Cameron taking out Campbell to make it to the final. Brian Adams and Steve Pollock out of Stony Plain. Adams taking out Pollock, Bertram, and Rayner. Bertram taking out Rayner. And Adams and Cameron meeting in the final. Proud sponsors of this broadcast race fans, we have 
Zippy's Auto, custom-made turbo systems, custom exhaust work, suspension modifications, upgrades, and more. They even do Mazda rotary performance work as well. Zippy's Auto in Edmonton. The brand new Husky Edmonton Car and Truck Stop and Husky House Restaurant is ready to serve you 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, west of Edmonton, corner of Highway 16 and 60. Meet the competition. Competition shovels in Stony Plain reminding you the Canada-wide clearance event is underway. 15 minutes west of Edmonton, competition shovels. Oil field and industrial electrical distributors think ESCOM in NISCU. Steve Boersma, 955-3726, ESCOM. You pull it auto parts, your choice for quality used auto parts. All parts come with a 30-day warranty, and all cars are conveniently placed on stands for easy access. Bring your tools and save money. The proud sponsors of this broadcast, Trilenium Industries, they're the design and manufacturing specialists for the oil field, mining, and pulp paper industries. New hydraulic systems built to your specifications. Draw works to meet your needs. The new millennium is here for manufacturing, design, quality, and repairs. Trilenium Industries, 413 Trilenium Industries, a championship drag racing and coverage of Snap-on Tools Hot August Night and the NHRA Canadian Open. Stan Anchors joining me up in the broadcast booth. It is a semi-final time, Stan, in the Super Gas class. They scored two Ford Fairmonts. One from Calgary, one from Edmonton. Well, Dave Archambault is uh, one of the competitors up from uh, Calgary in uh, the near lane and the Scott Hearn in the far lane out of Edmonton. Uh, Scotty Hearn would uh, sure love to make it to the final, but hey, it's sure with uh, Dave Archambault. Reaction times on the board, a 4.62 to a 5.02 for Dave Archambault. Index for Super Gas is 10.11. Don't go faster than that. A 10.13 for reaction time. One of the reasons why, Scotty Hearn, he crossed the finish line first. He had the better reaction time, even though he was not closer to the index. And uh, Scotty Hearn, as you can see him, will be just ever so slightly leaving the start line quicker than Dave Archambault from Calgary. So that's one half of the uh, Super Gas final, Scotty Hearn. And uh, who will make up the other half? We'll find out here in just a couple of moments as uh, we have the drivers coming up to the burnout box area right now. And Brad Decker is uh, one of those competitors out of Sherwood Park. Brad this is Decker. Eddie Pleasure in the far lane. Eddie Pleasure in the uh, far lane. Eddie Pleasure hoping to make it five wallings tonight with the win. He has to get by Brad Decker, who's a huge, huge competitor here at this facility. Reaction time on the boards. A 4 0 0 is a perfect light in the Super Gas class. Look at Eddie Pleasure. He won't be giving any ground at all to Brad Decker. A 10 11 is the index, and a 10 19. Brad Decker did all he could. The slow reaction time definitely hurt him. Pleasure crossing the finish line first. A 10-19 on the 10-11 index. Pleasure will go to the final in the Super Gas. So Eddie Pleasure, one step away from winning yet another Wally. Yeah, well, Eddie, Eddie this year, he started out very early. He's probably got more racing this year than some guys have in two, three years under his belt. He's been down in the States uh, back when the snow was still on the ground here, and it, it showed up here. Indeed, just car length actually, yeah, but a car length lead for Eddie Pleasure winning it right at the finish line over Brad Decker. Well, you just mentioned something about snow. What is this? What is this? Yeah. Don't oh, give this your eyes great. a rub, folks. Uh, this is a class that's been around for a couple of three years now that NHRA brought in. Because of the popularity of snowmobiles, not only up in Canada, but in the northern states and uh, these guys wanted to race them, and I'll tell you, they're making them fly. This is Lance Baker out of uh, Calgary on that 96 Formula uh, sled going up against Tim Ryerson from Calgary on that 78 Suzuki drag bike. So it is sled taking on motorcycle, and uh, the sled has the quicker dial-in time. So 9-9-0. Ryerson to the line first. A 483 reaction time, O Baker. An 8.58, that's going to be almost oh. impossible to make up that slower yeah. reaction time. Ryerson will cross the line first, closer to his dial-in time is actually Baker, but Ryerson wins it with an 11.30. Uh, Lance Baker runs a 9.93, 126.83 miles an hour. Tough break for Lance Baker, but if uh, he was a little bit uh, quicker on the start line Christmas tree, maybe he could have picked up the big win against Tim Ryerson. Well, Tim Weave, one of the winningest drivers in these past several seasons at 
this facility. Gets the bye run into the final. A reaction time of 5.09. Dial in time 10 second flat. He runs a 10.08 at 129.87 miles an hour. So Tim Ryerson from Calgary taking on Dave Weeb of Edmonton. Hey, a battle of Alberta on the bikes. And we'll be seeing the final in the motorcycle class a little bit later on in this broadcast. So Stan Anchors, uh, the sun's starting to set. Uh, as you can see, it's sort of blinding us here in the tower. Is it going to be a factor for the drivers at all? Uh, yes, it could be, Gordon. Just depending on how low it gets here. Uh, a lot of the guys have the dark visors and that. Um, they, 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 they've reached here before. They'll compensate for it. But, yeah, it could possibly be a factor. But... Um, I'm not really overly concerned about it. Although maybe the drivers are. Yeah, exactly. Well, Steve Adams, who has uh, been the track champion here at this facility, he was the 1998 Super Comp champion. He's one step away from heading into the final here tonight at Budweiser Motorsports Park. This is Super Comp semi-final action. Tony Allen in the far lane from Edmonton. A 9.09 is the index and a red light for Steve Adams. So that gives the win to Tony Ellett. Tony Ellett wins and will go into the final. Steve Adams, a rare red light from him. Tough break and not the best way to end your uh, night of racing. No. Um, Steve with the two car, uh, cars out of Campbell Automotive, Mark Campbell being the other driver, these guys have dominated basically this super calm field, but you know what? They threw the glove down, the guys have taken the challenge, and Tony's come up for it, and um, it's his night tonight. Well, Tony Ellett used to race uh, a super pro pickup uh, several years ago, and he decided, hey, I want to go just a little bit quicker. That used to be, uh, oh, it used to be a top alcohol dragster. That's right. Of, Way uh, back in, I believe, the late 70s, early 80s. That's right. So Randy White... He gets the by run into the final. Now, this fellow here, Randy, out of Calgary, cuts beautiful lights. Oh, he does. He's, it. he's taken about a year or so off, but he's come back this year. And I'm sorry, he's put the fear in the rest of the guys. Well, look at the light. You just mentioned it. A 4 two, 9 reaction time of 4 zero, zero is perfect. A 9 zero, 9 index. And he runs a 9-12, 149.22 miles an hour. Randy White, part of the Dirty White Boys racing team, says, hey, I'm ready for a challenge. Tony Ellett, I'll see you in the final a little bit later on tonight. And that should be a good final, Gord. Uh, experience here, Randy been around for a while. Tony just around for a couple of years. So very interesting final. Little tidbit. A little tidbit on uh, Randy White. He won one of the first nighttime events ever held at this facility back in 1993 in the Nitro Hunt. So Randy White is ready to go. So how did Randy White make it to the final? Well, earlier on in the day here, uh, coverage that we uh, could not show you because of time constraints, obviously. White taking out Byron Ziegler of Olds. White then faced Evans. And then White, we just saw, having the bye run into the final. Now on the uh, other side of the uh, ladder race fans, we had, well, Steve Adams getting the bye run. He was the number one qualifier. Then he took on uh, Mike Popel. Mike Popel actually faced Chubb Tucker, Stan. Yeah. Jim Derovic, Tony Ellett, Mark Campbell, Hanasek, and then Ellett, Campbell, Ellett, and Adams. We saw that final round, and uh, Tony Ellett makes it to the final round here tonight at Budweiser Motorsports Park and Trilenium Ministries Championship Drag Racing and coverage of the uh, Snap-on Tools hot August night. Well, we've seen this car before, Stan Anchors. Our last broadcast on Fox Hunt 2000, Adolf Sabarin was the big winner, and he's hoping to make it to a final round appearance here tonight at Budweiser Motorsports Park. Yeah, here we have Chrysler versus Ford, Mustang versus Demon. This is the uh, pro semifinal right now, race fans. Bart Mason from Calgary, Alberta, and that's 71 Dodge Demon, Adolph Sabern out of Edmonton, 67 Mustang. Dial in times are on the board at 12.30. Concentration on Adolph Sabern's face, 12 second flat dial in time. Both drivers are away. Mason has the better reaction time of 5.77 to Sabern 6.01. Can Sabern make up for the difference? Can he? At the finish line, both drivers break out. 
Mason breaks out less at 12.28 on his 12.30 dial in time. Sabern breaks out more with 11.96 on his 12 second dial in time. So, Bart Mason out of Calgary makes up one half of our final in the pro class. Who will make up the other half? And we hear the yep. warm up in the background Terry O'Connor, Rod Havens. Here, Gord, if you looked at that shot we showed of uh, Adolf, the sun was just in the face. I think the sun maybe made a difference. Uh, Adolf and Bart both used to cut real good reaction times, but with the sun coming at it, the angle is that I think that made a difference there. Well, here's a good look at a track champion going back a few years ago here at Budweiser Motorsports Park. Rod Havens from Airdrie, always a tough competitor, 12.59 dial in time. And in the pickup at 83 Ford Ranger, Terry O'Connor and Rod Havens. Oh, Rod, red a light. red light. His day is done. So that means Terry O'Connor gets the easy win into the final. Oh, he's lucky that Rod Havens, redlet, he broke out. Terry O'Connor, 12.77 on his 12.78 dial in time, 99.59 miles an hour. And a Terry O'Connor out of St. Albert will definitely make note of that and make adjustments. Yeah, and in, and in this case, Gord here, both of them had an infraction, but the first infraction is what counts. Yep, the red light. Terry got lucky. Yep. If that's what you want to call it. But uh, he's in the final. So it'll be a Ford Dodge final. Bart Mason out of Calgary taking on Terry O'Connor out of St. Albert. And uh, it's going to be a very, very exciting final in the pro class here this afternoon. Super Street. This is an indexed class. And we'll see the index here in just a couple of moments. 11.10. It's 11.13 is the index. Randy Motorshawn. Taking on Fred Schwab. Semi-final action right now, race fan, in the Super Street class. Now this class here, Gord, it's a heads-up class, but it doesn't go on a 4 tenths light. It goes on a 5 tenths light. 5 zero, zero is a perfect light. Right. And Motorshawn will 5 2 eight, but Fred Schwab, oh, a tough break for him. Red lighting again, not the way you want to exit uh, your day here at Budweiser Motorsports Park. Motorshawn runs at 11.20 on 11.13 index at 131.21 miles an hour for the win. Randy Motorshawn makes up one half of the final here at Budweiser Motorsports Park tonight. Craig Bickle, a driver who made the long haul from Vancouver Island. Island. In a Port beautiful 67 Isn't that a Merrill. gorgeous car? Indeed, uh, that is a gorgeous car. It's almost a shame to see this car running down the track. It should be just... <laughs> Well, pretty soon, this is probably going to be the only place we'll be allowed to see these cars running down the track with the, the price of gasoline yeah. right now at the pumps. Bickle, 11.13, a 5.40 reaction time. The index, as I mentioned, at 11.13. It's almost like a test and tune pass for him. He's going to just that's see right. what the car will run. Yeah, he can... Uh, oh. That's all right that he broke out because it was a single, okay? He can do that. He can red light, whatever. The only thing he can't do is cross the center line or hit the wall. 11.10. So, yeah, it was a test and tune. And, and, and again, he's come a long way. He doesn't know this track as well as some of the other guys, so he's getting his chance to check it out. Super pro semifinal action right now. And we've got Lance Unterreiner on the racetrack right now. He's got the buy into the final. It's a 69 Charger. 5.39 reaction time. He's dialed in at 10.74. Let's see how close he can get to his dial-in time. He goes faster with a 10.69 at 124.82 miles an hour. He obviously knows he was running unopposed, so maybe he's trying a couple of things out with his race car. He is. Also, what also is happening here, Gordon, with the sun going down, the air is getting better, and the guys are kind of just missing the dial-in a little. It's very hard to get that dial-in dead on where you want it. Well, he may uh, adjust his dial-in time for his final round appearance a little bit later on in this broadcast. We'll have to wait and see if he indeed does that. But Lance Uta Ryder out of Ardrossen makes up the one half of the final. One of these two drivers will now go to the final, and who will it be? Gary Triffle out of Edmonton in that 71 Nova. 454 under the hood. Didn't this used to be Darrell Webb's old race car? That's right. I that's think what, it is. That's what Darrell Webb started out in. That's right. Rob Reed from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan in that 71 AMC Javelin. Dialing time's on the board. Triffle at 10.15. Reed at 10.58. Try and get as close to that mark. Don't go faster. And a red light. What's with all the red lights? 
I think there's part of it is the anticipation of nerves. Nerves. It's a big race, very important race, and some of these guys are going further tonight than they've ever gone before. True. And the further you go, the closer you get to being in the final. Well, Triple, this is his first uh, final round appearance in ages. Triple, out of Edmonton, will take on Lance Uta Reiner a little bit later on in this broadcast. And our last broadcast, we had a little bit of nitromethane. Why not tonight? And one of the newer competitors in the uh, top fuel uh, motorcycle uh, side of things. We're gonna be seeing from him in just a couple of moments as we watch the, the replay, Gary Triffle and Rob Reed. And of course it's all for nothing because Rob Reed red lit at the start line in the far lane. It's uh, Gary Triffle picking up the big win. And Triffle, as we mentioned, will face the rider in the Super Pro final. One of the winningest riders on two wheels. He won three track championships in the motorcycle class here, 93, 94, 95. Kevin Boyer out of Edmonton took some time away from the racetrack and uh, he shows up at the beginning of this season with a 700 horsepower top fuel Harley Davidson. Here we go, Gord. Like I say, these guys, they're not content with going the speed they're going after. Nope. Well, they got to step up. And Kevin's a very good example. He took a bike that was very... Very well prepared, very successful with it. But now he's gone into the Nitro Harley fuel ranks. And uh, it's going to be a learning curve for him this year. It's, it just uh, it won't come easy. No, it will uh, not. He's uh, testing tuning right now because the Harley Davidson of all by uh, Harley Davidson of Edmonton all bike drags is actually coming to this facility. In a few weeks. And uh, he's, he's getting ready for it. Kevin Boyer out of Edmonton is going to light up the rear tire for us right now because, of course, you need uh, traction at the start line. It's a cement concrete launch pad, and the uh, rear tire will adhere to the surface. Let's listen in for the burnout from Kevin Boyer on his top fuel ride. Gotta love the sound of this, It sure looks good, and it is, uh, well, it's for show, to a point, but uh, a, a burnout definitely serves a, a huge, huge purpose. Kevin Boyer was saying in the passes that he has done so far this year, they're learning a little bit each and every time. They're not perfect. He says we're far from uh, doing 180, 190 mile an hour pass, but right now they are content with just getting down the track and keeping this uh, 700 horsepower motor together. Yeah, and Gord, Kevin's actually a guy that's adapted to this bike quite well. His size, I mean, he's going to have to fight this. He'll make it look easy. He's got to fight it. And uh, he's got the size, the strength, and everything. And he'll do good. I see great things for him in the future on this bike. Leans it out just a little bit. Yeah, and that uh, affects his ETN mile per hour. An 874, 123.66 miles an hour for Kevin Boyer. But uh, a few years down the road, hey, maybe with uh, his team that he has behind him and the sponsor, Ace Manufacturing, maybe next year we are going to be seeing oh, yeah. 170 no, no. mile an hour pass. Next Who year knows? we'll see uh, better things. This is a learning year. The curve is a big one yep. to learn. Just it was uh, his first year on the wheel of a re uh, uh, on the regular stock bike. He had three track championships to his name. Top alcohol dragster competitors lined up at the start line. Let's talk with one of the finalists. Driving the Trillium Industries sponsored Top Alcohol Dragster and the number one qualifier here at the NHRA Canadian Open. Snap on Tools Hot August Night, Steve Sicko out of Edmonton. Feels pretty good sitting on top right now. Uh, yeah, it sure does. We did it last year and uh, we're hoping to hold on to it this year. So, Pretty stout field of Top Alcohol Dragsters here for uh, tonight's big show. Yeah, it's nice to see. It's been a few years since we had a full field of cars, and uh, it's uh, going to be fun racing them. Of course, last time the Shaw was out, uh, you did have some mechanical problems with the race car. Like an $80 part, I guess, is what uh, did you in for the night. Things running very, very stout so far. Yeah, we're just uh, playing it safe and trying to... Battle of the fittest is what I'm calling this today. Whoever lasts the longest is going to win the race. So, <laughs> Well, whoever uh, keeps their car together is going to win the race. Wow, it's been uh, quite the night for our Federal Mogul Top Alcohol Dragster competitors just keeping their cars from uh, breaking. And uh, the two that have done the best, Steve Sitko, uh, who we're looking at right now, what concentration. The concentration right now, just uh, just look at his eyes. As he's staring down the quarter mile, which uh, what he is hoping is to be a victory, but if he looks over his left-hand shoulder, uh, he sees Bill Edwards Jr. from Sumas, Washington, 
hoping to do just the same. Yeah, gives a little thumbs up to us in the, with the camera here and that, but he is uh, concentrating. You have to. Things happen too quickly. Well, how they made it to the top alcohol dragster final, Sitko was the number one qualifier. Bill Edwards Jr. out of Sumas, Washington, your number three qualifier. Unfortunately, the number two qualifier, Serge Dion, broke in round number one and couldn't even make the call against Bill Edwards Jr. in round number two. So as the latter shows, Edwards Jr., Sitko are meeting in the final, and we've got that for you right now, race fans. And uh, the early advantage definitely will have to go to Steve Sitko, but right now with the uh, breakage, and uh, it, it's anyone's game. It is anyone's game. Steve Sitko lighting up the rear tires on his uh, Trilandium Industry sponsor, Top Alcohol Dragster, is one of the uh, many proud sponsors on that, that, that race car. Okay, Gordon, now here, the sun should not be a factor. It's no. gone down enough. There's a little bit of cloud cover, actually. So the sun should not affect them with the, the tree. So Bill Edwards Jr., this is uh, another American, a Can-Am final, I guess if you can call it that. So Steve Sitko out of Edmonton, Bill Edwards Jr. from the state of Washington. Uh, Martin uh, Shogren, hoping he's got the tune-up right for uh, Sitko's race car. Yeah, even though Sitko's from this town here, Steve's from Edmonton and that, lived here all his life and that, his brother Kenny's involved with Sir Dion and the other That's right. Top Alco car. Um, he wants to win it. You know, he wants to not have the Americans come up here and upstage no. him or anything like that. So we should have a very good race here. Oh, look at the, uh, we've got a big, big storm coming in. We keep that quiet for now, but that's quite the thunderhead uh, as we look west down the quarter mile over the APAC grandstands here at Budweiser Motorsports Park. Race fans, I hope you're enjoying the coverage thus far. This is Trilandium Industries Championship Drag Racing and coverage of the Hot August Night and the Canadian Open. This is your first final of the night here on television. Junior, Edwards Junior, Sitco. The RPMs are going to come up as they get close to the start line. The RPMs come up to around 3,000, 4,000 and then they will stage the car and then head down the quarter mile. Edwards Jr., Sitco, final right now. Well, Bill Edwards Jr. cut the better light. Steve Sitko gets by him just about the 1,000-foot mark and takes him for a win of 628, 209.93 miles an hour. Mile per hour is a very close. Bill Edwards Jr. from Sumas, Washington, a 654. 207.27 miles an hour. But look at the reaction time. Bill Edwards Jr. had a slight advantage a slight lead right off the start but well, if you look in the replay here oh hold the wheels oh, what steve did but steve just outpowers him going down the track steve's got the horsepower in his car tonight and there it is beat him by a car length at the end car and a half length lead as the uh capacity crowd looks on here at budweiser motorsports park so congratulations to steve sitko winning the big trophy here tonight at budweiser motorsports park but also congratulations to Bill Edwards Jr. up from Sumas, Washington. Uh, he survived, which was indeed an expensive day for a lot of the other competitors here at the at the Canadian Open. Snap on Tools hot August night. Yeah, he's got nothing to be ashamed of. No. It's, you know, you want to win, but hey, next to winning, runner-up's the best. That's right. Jet car time here at Budweiser Motorsports Park. The uh, second round of action here as you have a close-up look at Casey Jones in the Cannonball Express. What a competitor he is and what a character as well. For, oh, uh, those of, uh, a lot of race, fun. That, for those race fans that were here at the facility tonight and managed to go down into the pit area and talk to some of these uh, competitors, uh, one of the more colorful characters is Casey Jones from Van Nuys, California. And the old cow catcher on the front. This is one of the more unique jet dragsters in North America. And there's the newest funny car in Canada, the only jet funny car in Canada, SeaTech, RigSupplies.com, sponsored 2000 Monte Carlo of Brad Janoszewski out of Drayton Valley. And uh, we are set and ready to go here. But right now, what I think I should do is just pass along some of the proud sponsors of our show. Bringing you the television coverage, All West Auto Parts. Replacement parts for newer vehicles definitely is expensive. For Auto Parts 1990 and newer, give All West Auto Parts a call. 
Competition Chev Olds and Stony Plain reminding you the Canada-wide clearance event is underway 15 minutes west of Edmonton. Nobody beats the competition. Competition Chev Olds in Stony Plain. The flagship of car and truck stops in Canada is now open. It's the brand new Husky Edmonton Car and Truck Stop and Husky House Restaurant open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Custom-made turbo systems, custom exhaust work, and more. They're a Mazdri Rotary Performance Work Specialist. It's Zippy's Auto in Edmonton. If you're needing any electrical supplies in the oil field or industrial uh, area of things, ESCOM Electrical Distributors is for you in NISCU. And the proud title sponsors of this broadcast, Trilenium Industries, the design and manufacturing specialist for the oil field, mining, and pulp and paper industries. Trilenium also offers general machining and hydraulic repairs. The new millennium is here for manufacturing, design, quality repair. Give Trilenium Industries a call, 413 4635 Trilenium Industries. While they are coming to life and just in time too after that commercial break, the proud sponsors of this Trilenium Industries Championship Drag Race Night on Shaw Motorsports and the coverage of the hot August night NHRA Canadian Open. The cars are being fired in the far lane. It is. Brad Janoszewski out of Drayton Valley and Stan. He's, he's come a long way in a short amount of time. He only got his license in November of 1999. He only built the car six months ago, finished the completion of six months ago. So him and his lady friend, Heather, they have done marvelously with this car. They've, they should be very proud of what they've done. And you know, we talk a lot about Brad and Casey and that and all the drivers of that, but I'd like to talk about Heather here for a moment. You know, she works very hard on the car with it's just her and Brad mostly. Brad's got some help tonight because he's got some of his hometown fans from Drake Valley out here, you're man. And, uh, but Heather, Brad tells me going down the road, she's in the books reading about the car, reading things, checking things, and she's very integral part of this car. Actually, he gives her more credit than he has in the car. He says, I just get in and drive. She tunes it. As we go on board, Cannonball Express again, Cine Audio Visual, thank you very much for the uh, unique view that we have here at Budweiser Motorsports Park tonight and for the race fans at home checking in on the action, see the audio visual in Edmonton. Again, thank you very much. And, well, we should mention, of course, Casey Jones. He helped Brad Janoszewski get That's his right. uh, exhibition license. And uh, Casey Jones, uh, what, what a competitor. What a, what, what a character, I guess. Oh. You have to be to drive a choo-choo train. <laughs> Who's he got about 260, 270 miles an hour? Casey just enjoys life to its full extent. He does. He does indeed. Well, the driver's going to come up to the uh, start line. You're going to see as we have this a uh, rather unique finish line view. We're going to carry the finish line view all the way right to the finish line, race fans, from this camera vantage point. The cars will come up to the start line. You'll see the three stage bulbs illuminate on the Christmas line start tree. That means the drivers are about six inches away from having the wheels directly on the start line. They will move that six inches to eliminate the second level of bulbs, and away they go. Oh, Casey Jones cruising. 270 some miles an hour for Casey Jones. Brad Janoszewski around 235 miles an hour. What a run by those two competitors. That's uh, some of the best passes of the night so far with our jet car uh, competitors. As we take a look at the replay, just look at the smoke billowing from out of the back. Uh, Brad Janoszewski's rolling thunder. And the smokestack definitely uh, playing a part here as we see the smoke billowing out the top of Casey Jones and the Cannonball Express. Oh, what? well out in front is Casey Jones. It looks to me here, Gord, that Casey said, okay, Brad, I've shown you a lot, but not everything. And he did a little number on Brad right now, but that's all right. That's the learning curve for Brad. Odd man out here tonight at Budweiser Motorsports Park. Uh, snap on tools, hot August night. And Brad Janoszewski, you're the only jet funny car here up against three jet dragsters. What's going on? That's right, Gordon. Usually we race the jet dragsters. Richard Smith and I are the only two funny cars in the Pacific Northwest or in the West Coast. Now, Richard Smith, uh, driver, the Warhawk. That's correct. So he had another date for uh, this particular day, and we're out racing the dragster. We do it quite frequently. Now, the disadvantage, I guess, with the funny car is uh, you got to cut just a little bit more wind than do the uh, dragsters who slipstream down the track. That's right, Gordon. That's add on the add the weight of the body and everything else. It's like it has a lot less aerodynamics. So what I try to do is get out on them a little quick, try to leave on them and make them catch me. 
iTech, proud sponsor of your Jet Funny Car. What do they do again? The, is the SeaTech Energy is a, a rig supply and manufacturing company, and they have some service rigs. And we just now welcome rigsupplies.com on board for uh, the rest of this year, and we're looking forward to good things from them next year. Well, we'll be seeing uh, Brad Janoszewski and Casey Jones for the uh, final pass of our broadcast and the show here at Budweiser Motorsports Park a little bit later on. And uh, the good news right now, though, with Stan Anchors is uh, Chuck Haynes. Looks like they've got the problem uh, corrected, and it was. We were kind of guessing it might have been a starter. It was the starter. And so what they've done is uh, they've had to do a little bit of uh, tinkering in the pit area in between rounds to get the starter to actually spin and get the turbines of these jet motors engaged and rolling to, to fire the, this race car. So that's good news for Chuck Haynes and the crew of the uh, brand spanking new Volcano Jet Dragster. Of course, uh, the car that's running very well is uh, in the far lane, and that's Leland Blee in Pacifier. Both these two drivers from Billings, Montana. And we're going to hear the whine of the turbines here in just a couple of moments. Yeah, I knew Chuck would come back. Yeah. You know, unless it was a major thing, he I knew he'd get it fixed. And, uh, again, he wants to, he loves the crowd here. He loves to perform in front of them at yeah. Budweiser Motorsports Park. Well, this is one of the uh, first tracks he performed at professionally back in 1993 with the, uh, the original Gravity Store, which, of course, uh, we've been used to seeing over you know, the past couple of years on Shaw Motorsports broadcasts. And like I mentioned earlier on in the interview, he did pull a fast one on us and the racetrack by bringing this brand spanking new jet car to this facility and uh, making its, well, Canadian debut, debut, its North American debut in front of a packed crowd here at the track. Well, both cars are going. That is good news for Chuck Haynes. Time now for the fire show. Let's listen in. We're going to let the cars do the talking for just a couple of moments as Stan and I enjoy the view up here in the announcement tower. And Leland Blee takes out his boss again, a 628, 140. We got problems in the far lane. Leland Blee goes off into the the sand trap area, Stan yes. Anchors. Yeah, the, uh, the safety crew up at the top end saw he was going too fast, decided to put him in there instead of him trying to make that corner. Uh, just saved the fact. Everything looks all right, though, Gord. That's good, but uh, an 837, 172.5, one miles an hour for Chuck Haynes. The ET off just a little bit, but the mile per hour sure beats his first pass, which was zero on both sides of the fence. Yes. But uh, I'm seeing a ton of smoke billing uh, behind uh, Chuck Haynes' car. I never saw any flame. Yeah, so Chuck, again, must be having uh, the new car blues in Edmonton here, unfortunately for him. What's happened to, well, one of the reasons why I think Leland Lee went into the uh, sandbox area, as the, where they got the car out now, but I think he had problems with the chute. The chute did not fully deploy, actually, on that, that yeah. pass. Let's watch that a little closer here. This may be the reason why. Here we go. There's the chute being ah. deployed into the flame. 
he burned out a couple of panels on the chute, and uh, that definitely will affect your ability to slow down. So a tough break, and uh, we've got all the finals coming up for you next. We've had the top alcohol dragster final. The rest of the field next. This program is brought to you in part by Shaw TV. Our second final of our broadcast on the track right now. This is the Sportsman ET final in the far lane from Custer, Washington. It is Chris Brandt. He's dialed in with a 1364. Brian Jacob from Hinton, Alberta, dialed in with a 1534. Brandt has the better reaction time. Brian Jacob will be better looking over his left hand shoulder because Brandt. Just might track him down at the finish line, but Brandt slows up. He slowed up to a 13.76 on his 13.64 dial-in time. Brian Chaka crosses the finish line first, closer to his dial-in time, and that's all you need for the big victory, the big W. Brian Chaka wins it. From Hinton, Alberta. Yeah, all you have to do is the math there. Brian was a little late, but he caught up to him and did it. Uh, better closer to his dial-in, and yep. that's why he won. So about a car length, oh boy, car length victory there for Brian Shaka from Hinton, so he is your sportsman winner here tonight. Time now for the Pro ET final. We saw the uh, semifinal just uh, moments ago, and uh, here are your finalists. Driver from Calgary in the far lane, then at 71 Dodge Demon, it's Bart Mason warming up the hides on that 83 Ford Ranger, Terry O'Connor out of St. Albert. Mason O'Connor, final in the Pro ET. Dial-in times are on the board right now for you race fans. Mason at 12.27 dial-in time. Terry O'Connor at 12.78 dial-in time. O'Connor will leave the line first. The perfect light is 5.00. You want as close to the 5.00 mark as possible. O'Connor, oh, an unbelievable reaction time with a 5.14. Oh, Mason was beautiful. sleeping with an 8.05. O'Connor basically has this thing in the bag. He does, but, oh, oh he breaks oh, out. Oh, He breaks out big It was time. his to win, Gord, it was his to win. It was his to win, but he loses it, breaking out at 12.07 on his 12.78 dial in time. Bart Mason will say, thank you very much. This was not mine to win here tonight, but uh, that's part of uh, bracket racing, yeah. where the uh, slower vehicle can pick up the big win. Again, a dial-in time is what you think your vehicle will cover the quarter mile in, and uh, Terry O'Connor thought wrong. Yeah, all of a sudden, Terry's truck picked up and uh, Where did that come got from? something out of somewhere. I'm sure he'll be... Uh, he'll be kicking himself. Yeah, he'll be kicking himself quite well, but uh, nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, Runner-up. Congratulations, Bart Mason out of Calgary, Alberta, winning in the pro final here tonight. Let's move it up just a notch to the super pro final. You can see on the windshield there, a 10.68 dial in time will be displayed on the finish line scoreboards for the race fans in the grandstands. And for you at home, it's on the screen. Lance Uta Reiner from Arch Ross in that 69 Charger taking on Gary Triffle out of Edmonton. 10.15 dial in time for Triffle. I think this is the uh, first round appearance or first time appearance in the final round for both these two drivers. That's Nerves. right, you're correct. Yeah, they've been racing for quite a while. First uh, time they've been in the final in a big race. Uh, On TV. Oh. Red oh. light, Uta Reiner. That gives the win, the blue W, to Gary Triffle out of Edmonton. A 10-15 dial-in time. Let's see what he runs just for the heck of it. A 10-2-5, 133.13 miles an hour. His reaction time, though, Triffle is very fortunate that Uta Reiner red lit. But Triffle is your super pro winner here tonight at Budweiser Motorsports Park. Yeah, a little bit of the nerves for Lance, and uh, I'm sure he was very tense behind the wheel. It'll be interesting to get an adrenaline meter on these guys when they uh, It's off the scale. scale. It's yeah. off the scale, yeah. but a driver who is cool as a cucumber in any particular race, five-time track champion in the far lane, 
out of Sherwood Park. It is Ed Matajewski in that 71 Nova, sponsored by Competition Chev Olds. In the near lane from Millet, it is Ron Scott in that 68 Camaro. Ed Matajewski, he won a Wally, I think it was last year, in the stock superstock class. So he's looking for two Wallys now, if he can pick up the big win here tonight. But Ron Scott hoping to end that streak here and now. Dialing times are on the board. This is your stock super stock final. Matajewski at 12.64 dialing time. He will leave the line first. Ron Scott will try and chase him down. A perfect light. 5-0-0. Zero, zero. Tree will count down. Juski will uh, leave the line first. That's 5.65 reaction time. Ron Scott. Oh, he's going to have a heck of a time trying to catch up to Ed Matajewski unless Matajewski breaks out. No. Matajewski will not be doing that. A 12.74 win for Ed Matajewski. 96.67 miles an hour. Ron Scott runs a 12.21 on his 12.18 dial in time. 109.91 miles an hour. Congratulations to Ed Matajewski out of Sherwood Park. Your stock, super stock champion here tonight. And another Wally. Yeah. And Ed just keeps trucking along, Boy, picking them ever. up. Does he ever. Super Street Final coming your way right now, race fans. And uh, this is going to be an interesting little battle as well. Randy Motorshot out of the Edmonton area taking on Craig Bickle from Courtney, British Columbia. That's just outside of Victoria. On the island. On the island. Alberta versus BC. He's made the long haul to get here, race fans. And oops, we've got... Uh, that's the reports of debris on the racetrack right now. So that's going to be sending out the Budweiser Motorsports Park safety safari to sort of inspect what that possible piece of debris is. Apparently our, our last uh, pairing, uh, one of the drivers uh, said, something may have fallen off my car. So uh -huh. actually this is a perfect opportunity. I was hoping we were going to get a chance to do this. To show you the ladder. Here's how Craig Bickle made it to the final, taking out Knight's and Mandlis, of course, on the other side of the ladder. Uh, Motorshawn had no easy task either. He had all kinds of uh, competitors. He had to make his way through. Uh, Sims, of course, who won uh, from New Norway on our uh, last telecast. Uh, Motorshawn taking out uh, Braun. Uh, there's Dieter Holst, Fred Schwab, but Motorshawn making up the other half of the final in the uh, Super Street class. As you can see, the Safety Safari uh, looking for that uh, wayward piece of machinery that has possibly fallen off one of our race cars and uh, looks like they found what they are looking for and they will head back to their respective positions and we'll get these uh, super street competitors Craig Bickle, Randy Motorshawn, they will refire their race cars and have our final for you oh, what a they're gorgeous cars you can't uh, beat the cars from the 60s you no, really you, can't. you can't, Gord I mean, and, and this is a beautiful 67 beautiful 468 cubic inch engine uh, underneath the hood powering this race car. And uh, the lights, well, they've been on now for a good 20 or 30 minutes or so as the sun is pretty well down now here at Budweiser Motorsports Park. And we should see the reaction times improve somewhat with yes, the Christmas tree counting down. Super Street Finals, race fans, and this is an indexed class. The index is set down by the NHRA for this class, for this racetrack. Do not go faster than the posted time on the board or your day is done. Randy Motorshawn, Craig Bickle definitely know that. They've got their cars set up, and they are away. Bickle, the better reaction time with a 5.49 to Motorshawn, 6.24. They cruise down the quarter mile. Index is 11.13. Randy Motorshawn breaks out with an 11.10. He is your runner-up in the Super Street class. Congratulations to Craig Bickle from Courtney, British Columbia, winning the Super Street class here at Budweiser Motorsports Park tonight. Close race, but a breakout. The temperatures are cooling off, too. Yeah, and Craig had the better reaction time here. Yep. But Randy, boy, Randy really started to come on. And... Uh... Well, he had to make up for the slower reaction time and uh, couldn't do it. He breaks out trying. That's why the reaction time is so important at the start line. A lot of the times the racer has won or lost right at the start line. This was not the case in this event as uh, Motorshawn just about did it, but he broke out. Super guess. Yeah. 
final time now. Race fans here at Budweiser Motorsports Park. And we talked about Eddie Plazer earlier out of Edmonton. He's got four wallies. He's hoping for his fifth year tonight with a win. Scotty Byrne in the far lane, hoping to be the big champion here tonight as well. And here we've got probably the two best at this point in time super gas racers in Alberta, if not Western Canada. Well, Eddie Plazier qualified number 10 in qualifying earlier on tonight. Scotty Hearn qualified number four. So your number four qualifier taking on your number 10 qualifier. The index is on the board at 10, 11. Again, don't go faster than that. Pro Treat, 4 0, zero perfect light. A 4 7 0 for Scott Hearn. He's got the early advantage as these two drivers head down the quarter mile up to the finish line. And Scott Hearn breaks out with a 10-0-9 Eddie Plazier. Look, at he slows to a 10-18 on a 10-11 index. Again, it was Scott's race to win. It was indeed. We see, this has happened a couple times tonight now. A tough break for Scotty Hearn. Treed, Eddie Plazier breaking out at the finish line. Eddie Plazier, your super gas champion. How did these drivers make it to the final? Well, Scotty Hearn, we just saw him there running up. He took out uh, Dave Archambault in semifinal action, which we uh, saw a while ago now on our broadcast here on Shaw Motorsports. On the other side of the ladder, look who Eddie Plazier had to go through. Brian Vaughn, Jerry Rollheiser, some two strong competitors in the Super Gas class. But Eddie Plazier is your Super Gas champion here at Budweiser Motorsports Park tonight in the NHRA Canadian Open. Super Comp final time now, race fans, and well, a driver looking for his first win, going up against a driver who has uh, won a nighttime race here before. So, Tony Ellett in the far lane, yep. Randy White in the near lane. Tony Ellett, Tony Ellett out of Edmonton. And the dragster, Randy White from Okotoks in the Dirty White Boys racing team. Now, how did these two drivers make it to the final? On the one side of the ladder, Randy White taking out Byron Ziegler. White also taking out uh, Evans in the semifinal we saw a while ago on this broadcast on the other side of the ladder. Well, we had Adams, Steve Adams, your number one qualifier, was taken out by Tony Ellett. Tony Ellett qualified number eight. So it's the number eight qualifier in Tony Ellett taking on the number two qualifier in Randy White, part of the Dirty White Boys racing team. 909, the index, perfect light of 400. Oh, oh no. Jumping the gun was Randy White. In fact, he actually deep staged that race car. Yeah, he did. Tough break. That gave the win to Dave or Tony Ellett. A 9.09 runs a 9.16 at 147.25 miles an hour. Oh, what a disappointment for Randy White. He yeah. actually didn't jump. What he did was he deep staged the vehicle, which means he went further ahead on the start line, which is not allowed in the Super Comp class. In other words, he basically knocked out the pre-stage lights and just staged the uh, staged lights and that was a definite mistake on Randy White's part but uh, congratulations to Tony Ellett to all this we forgot Tony Ellett wins his first Wally at Budweiser Motorsports Park he'll be one excited oh, driver that, definitely that crew will be very happy at the top end I can imagine they'll be just ecstatic you're a motorcycle ET final on deck right now race fans Battle of Alberta final Calgary versus Edmonton Calgary represented by Tim Ryerson on that 78 Suzuki drag bike Tim Weeb out of Edmonton one of the winningest drivers here at this facility in the past three seasons. Dialing time on the board. In fact, uh, hey, uh, Dave Weeb uh, finished second in points in 1999. He was the Calgary track champion. So these two have faced many, many times. It's payback time, says Tim Ryerson. Ryerson dialed in with an 11-2-0. He will leave the line first. Dave Weeb dialed in with a 10-second flat. Oh, and they are off. Tim Ryerson has the better reaction time over uh, Dave Weeb. At the finish line, who takes it though? Oh yeah, it was uh, Tim Ryerson all the way, courtesy of the better reaction time. 11.24 and his 11.20 dial-in time. Uh, Dave yeah. Weeb will be very disappointed with his reaction yeah. time. I, yes, and Dave's had a rough year this year. He's yes, he kind has. of been up and down that. Uh, yes, he didn't win in that, but uh, 
again, all the credit to Tim, you know, he was closer to his dial in, had the better reaction time. You know, on paper he had he had it to win. And Look on the, the track one. On our replay from our finish line camera, a quick check over the shoulder. He's going, Where the heck are you? Dave Wee. So Tim Ryerson runs it out at 11.24 at 100.44 miles an hour. Your champion in the motorcycle class here tonight at Budweiser Motorsports Park. Time now for the top comp class here. And this is going to be one incredible race. This is the nice thing about this class, Gord. Here we have a door car running a rear engine dragster. Uh, Altered in this class, everything. And this is what it's going. the fans are loving. It's not dragsters running dragsters or body running body. There's all the different variations here. It's a nice mix. And another thing, both the cars sponsored by Bell Automotive. By the way, this is your number one qualifier taking on your number two qualifier, Terry Cameron and the dragster, Byer, uh, Brian Adams in the Firebird. How did these two drivers get to the final? Well, here's what happened. Cameron taking out Steve Flasher from Whitecourt. Adams taking out uh, uh, Polak, uh, Derek Polak at a Stony Plain in the uh, competition Chevy sponsored Chevy pickup. So uh, they've had their travels to get to the final here tonight. And we've got it for you right now, race fans, on Shaw Motorsports. Again, this is Trilenium Industries Championship Drag Racing and coverage of Snap-on Tools Hot August Night, the Canadian Open. This race is for the Wally. Terry Cameron has the quicker of the two cars, but not by much. Cameron again in the dragster. Adams in the Firebird. We all have the dial-in times. Cameron is dialed in with a 743. Adams a 773. And uh, there we have it for you on the screen right now, race fans. So Adams will leave the line first, closely followed by Terry Cameron. Final top comp right now. Oh, Cameron cut the better light in the dragster. Oh, beautiful a, reaction. A 5 2 0. Adams, no way he was going to be able to hang on to the lead there, cutting a 5 92 reaction time. A 7.56 on a 7.43 dial-in time for Cameron. An 8-second flat on a 7.73 dial-in time for Adams. But the reaction time definitely hurt Brian Adams. As we see the replay at the finish line, Cameron nails him at the 1,000-foot mark, passes him right at the finish line for the big win. Snap on Tools, Hot Ox Knights, number one qualifier in the top alcohol funny car class. Roger Bateman up from Calgary. Roger, you ran an incredible run in your qualifying, and then uh, it's it's getting downright ugly out there as far as uh, getting this car down the track straight. Yeah, we're, we're struggling a bit. Even the first run, even though the number was good, then it wasn't a great run. We were all over the place and rowing the car around. So we, we got to fix something. We're going to have to kill some power or do something to get down the racetrack because we're struggling right now. And you're the number one qualifier. You're also the current track record holder on both sides, the ET and the speed. And uh, well, when it cools off a little bit here tonight, you just never know. Maybe we'll see some of that speed return. Well, I don't know. We, we haven't got a good grip. Some other guys are doing a better job right now. We have to put our heads together and come up with a fix for this. The, uh, the early indication from uh, race fans are is we're going to see a battle of Alberta drag racing style between you and John Evanchuk. That's, that's a possibility here tonight. Oh, definitely. John's been good everywhere we've gone recently. He's made some real positive moves. He's getting harder to beat. Well, one thing that Roger Bateman does not want John Evanchuk to do right now is beat him in this final round because, hey, this is for all the marbles. Yeah, Gordon, you know, Ever since John's come into this a few years back, four years ago now, Rogers helped him along in that, and they've become very good friends. But right now, nope. the friendship is out the door. Yeah. It's Rogers first man down well the owned. other end. Rogers owned uh, this event these past several years. Of course, he owns the uh, track record here in the uh, top alcohol funny car class. He seems to reset the mark each and every year. It's burnout time. Roger Bateman, as I mentioned, he set the track record here last year at the NHRA Canadian Open, running a 587-200, 38.15 miles an hour. This car is also the fastest race car in Canada as we uh, take a look at the uh, ladder. How did these two drivers get here? Well, Bateman, number one qualifier. Of course, he had the buy running in the first round. We saw semifinal action uh, a while ago in this broadcast. Bateman taking out Danny Fillion. Evan Chuck, your number two qualifier. 
makes it to the final, and he's taking on Roger Bateman. As I mentioned, Roger Bateman, the fastest top alcohol funny car in Canada. And uh, boy, Bateman has a busy, busy schedule. Of course, he's going to wrap up his race season November 9th through the 12th down in Pomona, California for the uh, NHRA World's Finals. Final. So uh, look for him maybe on a TNN broadcast. Here you go. Roger Bateman taking on John Evanchuk. Evanchuk, of course, uh, Edson Freight Lines, Edmonton Peterbilt Trucks, Husky Oil, some of the proud sponsors on that Red Wolf Top Alcohol Funny Car team. Both these two drivers each. Uh, around 2,500 horsepower. So we got about 5,000 horsepower coming up to the start line right now. Now, John here's been around for a long time. He's been running the alcohol funny car here for four years. But John's been around since back since the 70s. He was involved with the top fuel car yep. back then. Um, two years ago, he was involved with Daryl Webb with his alcohol funny car. Same and he made the big step, and now uh, John's progressing. I was there when he ran this car down the track the first time, and I hope I'm there when he wins the big one. Well, down in uh, Seattle a few weeks ago, he managed to take out uh, the number one qualifier. Uh, Bucky Austin. Bucky's nephew. Bucky's nephew, great. Pat Austin. Pat Austin. There we go. We knew he'd come to us. Well, Bateman, oh, he just treed John Evans from a 507 to a 563 reaction time. Look at the ET difference. A slower ET wins it. Bateman, a 644, 215.72 miles an hour. If he didn't have the horsepower and the traction, that would have been a win for John Evanchuk. He yeah. was, if the track was, say, 20 feet longer, the wind light would have been shining in, in John Evanchuk's lane. Oh, man. Again, another learning experience here, as you see, yeah, getting out of the groove a little bit. Well, again, the left lane's a little sloppier sort of say yes speak than the right lane and uh, John hit that bump and of course when he hit that bump the tires release and the RPM so actually John did a very good job of driving that car right there ran this year like you're saying a little earlier ran his first five second run five nine Seattle taking yeah. up Pat Austin so and then uh, meeting yeah. Bucky Austin in the next round yeah two big heavy hitters in that class so oh boy John's come a long way but he'll do her oh, I bet know. you he will he'll. another guy that's hoping to do her Kevin Boyer. Oh, that top fuel of Harley Davidson. His last pass, he leaned out the engine just a little bit as he crossed the finish line about 135 miles an hour. Uh, about 700 horsepower. Uh, these engines pump out. Ace Manufacturing, one of the proud sponsors on this ride. www.team aceracing.com. He's got his own personal website, as do a lot of our competitors. Actually, the Budweiser Motorsports Park at www.budpark.com have links to a lot of competitors that race here at the track. Kevin Boyer doing a test and tune pass. Let's see what he does. Well, oh, much to the disappointment of the crowd going ooh and ah. Kevin Boyer doesn't do much. But, you know, he launched. He launched very hard. Obviously, something broke. Yep. Very wisely on his part, thinking maybe he might be losing oil. Yep. Pulled over the side. Very Vet good move. Veteran move. Veteran move. Exactly. Three-time track champion here at Budweiser Motorsports Park in 93, 94, 95 in the motorcycle ET class. Of course, we just saw the final moments ago. Tim Ryerson taking out Dave Wee, but a tough break. He launched hard. Watch the front tire lift off the ground. Whoa. Boy, did he ever launch hard. So while we wait for Kevin Boyer to have some help in removing his top fuel ride off the quarter mile strip, the safety safari is here. It's commercial time. The brand new Husky Edmonton car and truck stop in the Husky House restaurant is ready to serve you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's the flagship of car and truck stops in Canada, west of Edmonton. Meet the competition. Competition Chef Olds in Stony Plain. It's 15 minutes west of Edmonton. Competition Chef Olds in Stony Plain. Nobody beats the competition. Your choice for quality used auto parts is you pull it auto parts. All parts come with a 30-day warranty. All cars can be placed on stands for easy access. Bring your tools and save money. For oil field and industrial electrical supplies, it's ESCOM. Electrical distributors in Nisku. Give Steve Borsma a shout in Nisku. And Zippy's Auto. 
Custom made turbo systems, custom exhaust work, suspension modification, upgrades, and more at Zippy's Auto in West Edmonton. And Trilenium Industries, they're the design and manufacturing specialist for the oil field, mining, and pulp and paper industries. New hydraulic systems built to your specifications. Draw works to meet your needs. Also, the new Millennium is here for manufacturing, design, quality repairs, and more. Maybe it's time to give Trilenium Industries a call. 413-4635. 413-4635. Coming up next, Jet Cars. Is where we're at, Budweiser Motorsports Park. Welcome back, race fans. Trilanium Industries Championship drag racing and coverage of the NHRA Canadian Open Snap on Tools hot August night. We got the Jets standing by. We've got Pro Alcohol Funny Cars coming your way right now. And the first pass, excellent pass to kick off our show. And we've got Jay Maggio in the far lane and that beautiful 57 Chevy Pro Alcohol Funny Car. Darrell Webb, your lane here in the JDC Corvette. No one's a team of burnout, we've shown you why. Gord, there's a very interesting thing here. I hope we get a chance to show it, but on the back of uh, Daryl's car here, Daryl and Jay are very good friends yes. in that, and, and there's a little bit of kibitzing going on here. And on the back of his uh, car, there's a license plate, and uh, it's, a, it's a little shot at Jay here, and it's a little challenging. It says... <laughs> by Jay. Oh, I hope and we get course, a shot of that. Well, I was there at the car show when they unveiled it to Jay. And, you know, Jay is a pretty good talker, but I'll tell you, for a few seconds, he was speechless. Then he looked at Daryl and says, I'll get you. It'll take a while, but I'm going to get you back. So, here we go. Nice shot of that smoky burnout. And uh, one of the uh, charities that the Daryl Webb uh, has, is true to his heart. He's got, uh, teamed himself up with the Kids for Cancer program. I think it's like five bucks a foot. Yeah. For a burnout, and, and he, he makes it that. well over the eighth mile, halfway down. More, he gets closer to the end of the car. There we go. There, there it is. By, by Jay. Well, thank you. And uh, Jay's that. seen that license plate a few times this year, and uh, so uh, I don't know if it's such a comical thing anymore. But I know Jay; he's going to pick her up, and then there'll be a license plate or something for Daryl as time goes on here. Always the intimidation factor. Any edge that a person could get over a competitor, be it a friend or a foe, uh, they, they'll take advantage of it. Oh, sure, yeah. Lucas yep. Oil Field, Shoppers Auto Pro Collision, a couple of the proud sponsors on Daryl Webb's Pro Alcohol Funny Car. This is some flashes of flame coming out of the, uh, the pipes of that race car. Of course, Joey's only. What a beautiful paint job on that 57 Chevy of Jay Maggio. So this is your Pro Alcohol. It's an exhibition run between Maggio and Daryl Webb. We've got it for you right now here on Shaw Motorsports. Maggio. Oh, Maggio gets out of the racing groove already. Daryl Webb will win this. Running a 780, 174.85 miles an hour. Maggio coasts to an 1193, 83.33 miles an hour. Well, he got to see the license plate again. But very, very wisely on Jay's part, yes. okay? Instead of keeping your foot in it, putting it into the wall or hurting yourself, he'll come back for another day. That's what a you know, it's no use. Um, yeah, don't no, you scraping up crazy. the paint a little bit. Oh, he did a wonderful job avoiding taking out the 330-foot uh, marker as well. So Jay Maggio and Daryl Webb. Daryl Webb picks up the big win. Congratulations to you guys. We'll see you at future broadcasts here on Shaw. Second consecutive hot August night here at Budweiser Motorsports Park from Van Nuys, California. Casey Jones suffering a little bit from the flu here tonight. Yeah, obviously you can hear my voice is a little bit rattled, Gordon, but we're, it's really good to be back here, and it's good to see you again, sir. Well, it's, it's good to have you back, and of course, what an incredible smoke show, fire show, your first pass of the night. Got a little bit more of that tonight as the sun goes down. Oh, it's only going to get better as it gets a little bit darker here, but I think the people are plenty impressed with what we already did for them, and... Uh, Get on out here and see us do it again. Well, indeed. Now, tell us a little bit about your Cannonball Express for those of you who are watching at home who may have not seen your uh, Jet Dragster before. Well, it's a J34 Westinghouse motor. This motor was built back in the early 50s. It was used in a Korean War fighter called the Banshee. We've designed our car to look like an old-style steam locomotive. It's got a cow catcher on the front, an operating smokestack, and an engineer's cabin in the back, and it's a lot of fun. Plus, it, it goes pretty good, too, for an old choo-choo train. Oh, indeed it does. Casey Jones. Jones, go get him in round number two here tonight at Budweiser Motorsports Park. We're looking forward to it. Brad's doing an excellent job. And, uh, you know, this is his hometown drag, and he's definitely gunning for us, so we got to be sharp tonight. 
Well, the action is going to get hot here, race fans, in just a couple of moments. We've got the uh, final two passes of our jet car competitors here tonight. Uh, Stan Ankers uh, joining me up here in the broadcast booth. Uh, we've actually asked a bunch of our winners from uh, earlier on in this telecast to gather down in the uh, staging lanes. And uh, you in just a couple of moments are going to run on down there and uh, grab some uh, interviews with our winners. And uh, be careful going down those steps for me, would you? Yeah, that's a... Uh... It's a long fall from the top here. <laughs> is it ever? There is a good shot of the SeaTech. Rolling Thunder. Jet Funny Car. Brad Janoszewski out of Drayton Valley. Again, Canada's only licensed Jet Funny Car pilot. This is Canada's only Jet Funny Car also. And uh, just based in Drayton Valley. So this is literally his home track. In the near lane, Casey Jones and the Cannonball Express. And race fans, he actually he's out of Van Nuys, California. And uh, Stan, you wanted to say something? Yeah. If you take a look at Casey's car, it's basically a replica of an old steam tree. And a uh, towel catcher on the front, stuff like that. Stan Anchors, you go down to the start line and uh, arrange uh, for the interviews, okay? And uh, we'll talk to you in a bit to wrap up our show. Race fans, I'm going to keep quiet for a bit, too. Let's listen into the fire show and see the fire show and the smoke show. This is incredible stuff. Brad Janoszewski, he had a slower uh, reaction time, but he runs a 6.66 second run, 228.31 miles an hour. KC Jones from Van Nuys, California, actually slowed. He ran a 708. He actually was out, uh, well out in front for a bit there, but slowed at about the 1,000 foot mark. Actually, uh, he flamed out about the halfway point on the racetrack. He was actually gaining on uh, Brad Janoszewski. But Janoszewski picks up the big win. Let's talk now with Leland Lee. Another driver up from Billings, Montana in the pacifier. Jed Dragster, a teammate, I guess, of uh, Chuck Haynes. But you're really going to be out there at Leland Lee to possibly put a number on your boss. Well, we're trying. I beat him a couple times this year already, so you never know. New car is awful fast. I don't know how, how I'm going to do that, but I'll have to do it on a tree, I guess. <laughs> uh, you've, been, you've been running this car for how many years now? Uh, about four years now. And it, it's been a lot of fun. You've been to many, many places. Oh, Name yeah. some of the places you've, you've actually traveled uh, being associated with the Haynes Racing Team. Oh, yeah. We went to Australia and Melbourne, Sydney, Perth, uh, all over Australia. Uh, Portland, watched the rain a couple times in Portland, uh, back east to Illinois. Uh, all around the U.S. and over in Australia, we had a good time. Good move for you getting into the racing end of things, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's a, been a ball. It's been a lot of fun racing with him. Well, good luck tonight. Leland Blee out of Billings, Montana, driving the pacifier here at Snap-on Tools Hot August Night.
Well, this is it, race fans. The final pass of our broadcast in the Jet Car class. It is Chuck Haynes in a brand new Volcano Jet Dragster taking on Leland Lee. Lee, of course, uh, won both earlier rounds. First round was because, well, Chuck Haynes had problems with his jet. But things are ready to go for this final pass of our night. Hope you've enjoyed the action here. After this pass, we will take a short, short commercial break because uh, we're running out of time here in our broadcast uh, here. Uh, we're going to talk with uh, some of our winners, which have gathered down in the staging lanes, who are sort of sneaking around the corner now with the Jet Car Fire Show, which is going to begin right now. Listen and watch this incredible smoke and fire show, starting with Lee and Haynes. Chuck Haynes wins it. We go down to the staging lanes to talk with some of our winners after this. Is your out of Edmonton? How's it feel? Very well, very well, very, very excited. Uh, the car went, worked flawless all uh, all day and uh, uh, was a close race at the finish. It was uh, nine one thousandths, and we're just happy to get the fifth. Uh, we needed uh, we needed something else on the fireplace. This is what it's all about, race fans. And to Tony Allen, man, oh man, you picked up the big win here tonight at Budweiser Motorsports Park. Well, thanks a lot. I just want to thank everybody that works here and all the volunteers. I'd like to thank my crew. Uh, I'd like to thank my dad and Driveline and everybody else. I just, team effort. We did it. Thanks a lot. And uh, this was one of my first uh, wins at an NHRA Open like this, so I'm just excited as could be. Good. And you've been racing a long time, haven't you, Brian? I have. I was going at it for about three years, and I took about a five-year break, and I've just started again this season and having a lot of luck. Okay, here we are with the winner in Super Pro, Gary Trifle from Edmonton, Alberta. How does it feel, Gary? Well, it feels very great to be here, and uh, it's my first time, and it, it's uh, a lot more, uh, has a lot more feeling to me than just, you know, going rounds and uh, winning in a, you know, an ordinary weekend event. Ed, this is uh, not really uh, new to you, is it? How many times have you won this? This uh, category, or a uh, Wally, let's put it that way, a Wally. Uh, this will be my uh, fifth Wally now, uh, right. but the second time I won in uh, in the stock, stock Super Stock combo. So. Right. And uh, you actually, with one of your sponsors here, Competition Chevrolet, uh, you've been with them quite a few years, haven't you? Yeah, they've been with me now since '94, so yeah, about six, going seventh year, I suppose. Right. So yeah, they've been they've been good to me. They they keep me going. I'm from uh, Courtney, BC, on Vancouver Island. So it's about a 14, 15 hour drive to here, mm -hmm. including the ferry ride over to uh, Vancouver and, and up, up from there. Right. So, and uh, how long have you been racing? I've been racing since I was 16. Oh, okay. Yeah, so you've been around for a little while. Yeah, that, and, since uh, I was old enough to drive, I've been. Right. We had a pretty good run today. Uh, last weekend, actually, we did win the quick 16. That's right, yeah. And uh, there's a lot of tough comp competition in this new class, eh? 
Cars are fast. It's exciting. You can have blowing fun, uh, funny cars, alcohol, uh, carbureted, whatever. It was an experiment. Division 6 uh, started in the year 2000, and it's the only division in NHRA that is running the top comp class. Yeah, I've heard that, and I believe that they're going to do some other uh, uh, divisions. They're also going to take over the top comp deal, and I think the spectators like it. And I just like to get the deal in here with a sponsorship bet. Absolutely. thing. Absolutely, no, this is uh, this is. I'd your like to thank uh, Bell Engine Service for making the big horsepower to run us 180 mile an hour at oh. times, and uh, especially like to thank my crew chief Crystal. Right over there. There she is. Get a little shot of Crystal, please. <laughs> yeah, she dials the car in to hit the number, and I try to do my job as the driver, and we made it to the final. Well, Terry Cameron, again, congratulations on being the 2000 Snap on Tools Hot August uh, Night Canadian Open champion. That's a big mouthful, but uh, big smiles, and it's going to continue on into the week, yeah. I bet. Thanks a lot, Gord. Thank you very much, man. Thank you. Well, race fans, uh, Stan Anchors, if you can join me now, it was. An unbelievable night here at uh, Budweiser Motorsports Park. We didn't hear uh, hit the 300-mile-an-hour mark. Too bad for Chuck Haynes with those two uh, other runs. But, man, he sure hit the nail on the head that final pass. Yes, he did, Gord. It was a fantastic night. The weather was just beautiful all day. The night turned right. The air was right in everything. But, unfortunately, like you say, we didn't hit the 300. But that gives Chuck something to shoot for for the next time he comes back. And I know he will do it because he's going to be a little frustrated right now. And he's going to want to prove that he can do it because we know he can. But he's going to want to prove it to the fans in the stands. Indeed, Stan. And again, thank you very much for joining me up in the broadcast booth here tonight. And uh, thank you for uh, running down the steps and uh, doing those interviews for me while I was making the call of the final passes of our competitors here tonight. No problem, Gord. It's been a great fun time again and an enjoyable time working with you. Race fans at home, thank you for joining us here on Shaw Motorsports Trilenium Industries Championship NHRA Drag Racing and coverage of the Snap-on Tools Hot August Night Canadian Open. Race fans, we're going to see you at a track near you. Good night from Budweiser Motorsports Park.